Well, okay. So this is my first time presenting uh, to such a large amount of people. Um, I haven't done it before, uh, and I'm very stressed, Aaron. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to try my best. Uh, so before coming to the event, I have had uh, a um, kind of like a presentation lesson, and uh, what they taught me over there was that um, to to know your audience, to actually know uh, uh, who they are, uh, what they do. Uh, so um, maybe in the chat, uh, you could all say like if you're it, uh, how you use Blender. So do you use it for games? Do you use it for film, architecture? Any anything surprised me? Uh, and uh, yeah, I'll check it out. So uh, Blender worth its weight in gold. First of all, who am I? My name is Thomas Paul. Uh, that's my artist name. Uh, it's also it's my first name and my middle name. Uh, but my full name is Thomas Paul Murin. Uh, the reason why I just put Thomas Paul is because no one remembers me on, um, or sometimes can't even pron pronounce it. But uh, uh, you can pronounce it however you like. Really, it's just it's just a, a difficult uh, thing to do. I've um, uh, I'm a 3D prop artist. Uh, I've been uh, uh, designing in 3D for quite a while now, um, and I'm currently uh, uh, studying at uh, a university called Escape Studios. Uh, I've just passed my bachelor's and I'm heading into master's now. <clears throat> so my first ever program uh, was Maya. Um, gonna, I feel like I'm going to get uh, <laughs> slaughtered here. But uh, yeah, that was my first program. It's Maya 7. Uh, this was uh, back in 2007 or 6. I can't remember too well. Uh, but um, yeah, this is what it looked like. Uh, <laughs> it looked god awful uh i don't know if that version had uh, even solid mode uh which is mad uh a lot of uh, game companies um tried uh, switching <clears throat> from uh from like uh, maya to 3ds max uh because they didn't have any solid mode um uh which is yeah uh, pretty mad but uh, then i um i uh, I, I tried. Uh, I tried looking around. Tried to uh, talk to someone about uh, about 3D and uh, about why I uh, uh, why I used it in the first place. Uh, what, why, how I could use it. And uh, someone, uh, someone whose whose name uh, I can't remember too well, but I'll I'll call him Nathan for now. Uh, they recommended me uh, uh, Maya. Um, I remember he was like looking around for books and stuff like that, and uh, he told me. <clears throat> Um, yeah, I use uh, I used Maya because it was the uh, the industry standard. A little bit about that little, uh, little later on, um, but uh, yeah, this was the UI back in two thousand and seven, and it, it's strange because a lot of uh, uh, games as well. My uh, my my um, professional experience is in uh, is in video games mostly. Um, uh the they, they had amazing ui but uh, for some reason these softwares were still uh stuck in in that kind of like very basic very generic ui um of course it's because it was mostly developed by developers and by programmers um so uh, uh i i tried uh, i tried my out quite a bit but then i found out i had a lot of uh, of issues with it so i went back to nathan and i said look i've got a lot of issues uh, with maya and uh, the community is not uh, incredible at answering that especially at the time that the the, uh, the internet wasn't super <laughs> great with uh, with answering 3d questions uh, and he said, okay, well, I've got uh, another thing um, that you could try out. And he looked through, through like uh, some, uh, some CD cases and he gave me the CD with a blender inside of it. Um, yeah. And uh, since then, um, I went home, uh, booted it up, and um, yeah, I hated it. Um, I mean, you know, no icons. Uh, except you know the little ones down there. Um, the viewport was very spacious, which was nice, um, but I had no idea where to begin with. Uh, so um, so I searched it up, and I found out. I found this site, um, which is uh, uh, 
when I first started in 2.43, this is what it looked like, very dark, very broody. Um, <clears throat> Showed some headlines, some uh, the community. It, it gave it gave a lot of uh, like um, tutorials there to, in the tutorial scene. Um, they had a features and gallery page, which so cool. Um, <clears throat> sorry, bear with me. Um, and I remember very strongly uh, in the gallery page there was this amazing render of a lion. Really, really, really cool uh, mechanical lion. I don't know if anyone will remember that, but uh, that really got me started with the Blender render engine. Um, so yeah, um, and uh, it, it, it's strange because um, it was in fashion because back then the Maya website looked like this, which was also dark and broody. Um, but uh, yeah, who turned off the lights? <laughs> I guess this is a great an analogy showing how much uh, CG representation has changed during the years. Um, they've gone from uh, from like a, uh, uh, a kind of like a down in the dark um, basement kind of level to much more, you know, the past are dark, dusty conference rooms with old people uh, and spotty uh, head and nerds talking about ray casting. And uh, now we have clean lit rooms. Uh, with suited young representatives uh, talking about ray casting. <laughs> but um, yeah, uh, then the 2.5 uh, uh, change happened, huge revolution. Um, and um, it, it was the way ahead. Uh, it, it was really way ahead of its time uh, in retrospect and stayed there for, uh, for like 11 more years uh, until 2.8 came out. Um, so what were the fruits of that labor? What were the fruits of uh, me getting into this program and, uh, and um, trying to work it out? <clears throat> well, loads and loads of assets, actually. I've, um, I've grown into loving uh, uh, 3D prop art, and uh, especially for video games for a real-time environment. Um, I'm a uh, I became a big, big fan of it. I used to do a little bit more character work before, but now I'm a lot more concentrated in environment. Um, and yeah, all of this using uh, using Blender, never veering from Blender. Uh, always, uh, always trying my best to kind of uh, learn more about the software and even learning uh, new things. Uh, even today, I learn a new thing, which is, uh, yeah, uh, it's, it's crazy. The, the software just keeps on giving and the community is crazy. Um, so yeah, uh, if there weren't any updates on the vanilla software, there were new add-ons uh, hitting the forums. Um, but uh, Blender didn't just give me a, a, a lot of assets. It also gave me a job. Um, so I'll be talking quite fast through this section. Um, I'm just impressed for time. A lot of this is, is uh, this whole uh, presentation was, uh, you, was uh, meant to be shown in Sweden. It was uh, meant to be shown to a company I'm, I'm a very, very fond on of and um it was um it <clears throat> i want to kill two birds with one stone uh, this was kind of like a a show off -y cv video cv uh but also kind of a you know how i use blender uh as well uh so yeah that's that's why it kind of seems a little bit like this is me this is my work uh but yeah i first started in ubisoft singapore i was um very 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 lucky uh, to have uh, people in the family who knew other people, uh, contacts is everything. Um, <clears throat> but I learned about um, how Blender was just unknown in the industry uh, at that time. Um, every everyone I showed it to, they they uh, a lot of people just didn't know what the software was. Um, and uh, I'm I reckon I was uh, I, I'd say I was the very first person to open it in Ubisoft Singapore. Um, but you know, that's don't quote me on that. <laughs> um, so next off was uh, was um, a frame store in London, which was also um, uh, a very lucky break. Uh, but this this time it was from a tutor. Tutor came back to me and uh, and said, "Hey, uh, I might have a little uh, a little opportunity for you to uh, become a runner at Frame Store." Uh, and of course, I was ecstatic, and I really really wanted you uh, to try it out. And uh, yeah. Um, uh, it was an incredible experience that I, uh, I really just don't regret to this day. Um, 
then I went into uh, looking for uh, looking for a job myself in a way, uh, still through contacts, contacts from the family. They uh, there was a, a person called Mark Montgomery who recommended me to a uh, to his um, company, which was Vision Free, uh, where I learned how to develop um, augmented reality, virtual reality, X reality, uh, research and development, basically. Um, and uh, yeah, it was it was quite fun. Uh, I learned a lot about those. I learned a lot that I didn't want to work in those, but uh, I still continued on and got into um, engineering. Uh, I uh, got into this company uh, who asked me what could I do for the company. I told them, well, I learned how to do augmented reality uh, applications. So uh, they asked me, oh, cool. Could you make an augmented reality application for us that works on the iPad? And I said, yeah, sure. So I gave it a go. Um, took me about like two weeks. We created like this this building, and uh, you could uh, you could create a cross section in the building and see like the different rooms and stuff in there uh, while using like a Google Maps uh, to actually be able to have a have a good view of uh, of uh, the environment that it was going to be put in. And uh, I remember they uh, they put me in a um, in a room and and told me, okay, we really like the application. Um, we were wondering uh, what else uh, could be done with this. And I said, well, uh, maybe even uh, using uh, GPS coordinates, we could actually be able to get people on a helicopter, for example, take their iPads out and be able to see the building on the actual site. And uh, and uh, one of them, I remember, like I think one of them just uh, came up and says, "What, like, like Avatar?" <laughs> and, uh, precisely. Um, so yeah, that was my time at uh, Morris Row. Um, I uh, and and one of the first times I got a, 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 got an award as well uh, for digital innovations, um, which was such a proud thing. Uh, I think it, I got like a uh, with that I got a. Um, a hotel for two, um, uh, like award as well with it, uh, which I never used. I, I don't think I, I ever used that. Um, but yeah, as I said before, I went into Escape Studios uh, afterwards, and um, uh, from there I started my undergrad. Uh, I restarted my undergrad course because I was in Bournemouth before, um, and uh, I was really pleasantly surprised by Escape Studios. Uh, uh, this is in no way I'm, uh, I'm not kind of like um <laughs> promoted by them or whatever but it was a, it's a fantastic uh, university especially if you want to get into animation film or games um uh, yeah check it out it's uh, it's brilliant and it's in the heart of london uh so you're five minutes away from frame store from double negative and all of that um really great um so yeah, uh, what I would recommend uh, for anyone, like, I know this is a very kind of game specific uh, uh, slide, um, game specific slides, but I want to kind of uh, talk about um, uh, what first got me into games in the first place, and uh, what what I would recommend to do um, uh, in the future if you want to get into uh, the video game scene or uh, the industry. I'd highly recommend going to game jams. Um, I think I'm at my 11th game jam now. Uh, the last one I did was the Unreal Spring Jam with a few of uh, of my university colleagues. Um, we've got like this this whole little like Discord uh, group where we just create loads of assets, and uh, there's there's never a dull moment. We're always kind of making something uh, something new, um, and uh, yeah, we we subscribe to game jams. Um, uh, which which was a lot of fun. The, the last one we we created was um, the um, it was like a a scene uh, where where two characters would fight alongside each other and the ice would break and you'd have to like break the ice enough so that the other character falls into lava. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, it was it was quite fun um, and. Uh, the only game jam I won out of the 11th one, 11 uh, game jams was the game jam 2018. Um, but uh, really, the the, uh, the the whole thing about game jams is not really like, winning. It's it's more like uh, having a good team and uh, 
and uh, just having fun really uh, making an asset uh, making a game that you can just put in your portfolio um, after that i started teaching um at city and islington college um i was uh I was recommended by someone else from Escape Studios, and uh, I started teaching Blender, uh, which I never thought I would do. Um, but yeah, uh, for some strange reason, I, I got uh, attracted to it, and um, I started teaching a lot more uh, uh, over there and a lot more in my own private time. I, I believe that education shouldn't have a cost. Um, and uh, and so I, I started teaching in my own time for free to a lot of people online and uh, and would even uh, invite some people to come in, come in in our Discord to uh, kind of create uh, a nice community and create nice environments as well with that. Uh, so anyway, my conclusion, uh, I know I'm, I'm a little bit early, but uh, <laughs> I was kind of terrified that uh, that it would be a bit too big, the, uh, the presentation, but uh, yeah been going through them quite quite fast so yeah blender opened many doors for me um but having contacts opened a lot more um at the end of the day it doesn't really matter what software you use i hear a lot of people talking about oh yeah blender versus maya or 3ds max or modo or you know cinema 4d <laughs> so many programs um but um as long as you show a passion for what you do, people will find ways to help you out uh, and to even um, uh, to even like uh, promote you and uh, uh, get you get you somewhere that you want to be. Uh, yeah, it's it's infectious. Um, <clears throat> but uh, there's a term that I've been hearing a lot as well, the the industry standard term. Uh, a lot of people talking about, oh yeah, no, this isn't industry standard. This is. Um, it's an expression that kind of roughly means uh, ready for the industry, right? Uh, it was made by uh, by big marketing firms to kind of uh, market their software and to, uh, you know, um, uh, get more money, to advertise a lot more and vice versa. Anyway, um, it's... I. I don't believe... I don't believe that there are any uh, industry standard softwares because if we... If we um, uh, if we had industry standard softwares, we wouldn't have technical artists in the industry who would be creating little add-ons um, uh, for it to actually work in a pipeline. So, um, of course, there are, you know, it, it is nice to have um, uh, th these softwares that have like Python support uh, or Mel support or, you know, Max script support. They're fantastic because you can then um, incorporate your, your software uh, with any workflow and uh, get it working uh, anywhere. And uh, the fact that uh, the uh, that Blender uses Python and uh, and uh, incorporates Python in uh, most of its high, well, all of its um, high level scripting is brilliant for the industry because it's uh, it's such a a, a used uh, language uh, like you might have seen uh, um, with uh, with Mark's um, uh, presentation. Um, but yeah, uh, so I, I uh, if certain programs claim to be industry standard, then why need technical artists in the first place is what I'm trying to, uh, uh, come up with. Uh, but as I said in the beginning, uh, you are all here to progress. Uh, like everyone here is, uh, is here to actually, uh, kind of, uh, listen, listen in and uh, learn a new thing. Uh, to change for something new and seeing a web blender is going uh, with new companies offering their help uh, for better software uh, to better the software like uh, Ubisoft and uh, um, even uh, even Google is uh, is helping out and uh, Embark Studios which is uh, what I uh, the company I, I made this kind of presentation for in the first place um, uh, maybe the future holds uh, the industry standard title ready uh, for programs like Blender, uh, where actual companies create these uh, um, these add-ons and uh, put it into into Blender and and uh, share it with the with the industry with the and with the community. So yeah, there we are. Thank you, thank you for listening. <laughs>